Early on when I was learning how to paint, one thing I found intimidating was painting figures. The figures are an important thing to add into your street scenes or your landscape scenes. They give the scene a sense of life and a sense of scale. So today I'm going to talk about how to add figures to your painting. So I think the first thing to think about when painting figures is getting the correct proportions. And so, if you look at the size of the figure's head, the figure is seven and a half, 7.5 head lengths long. And so, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the feet make up the half. And so that's a good rule of thumb to think about when painting your figures. So let's go ahead and paint a couple figures. So I'll paint a head. Get a different color for the torso. And I, I like to do my figures in just kind of quick gestures to get a sense of movement in them. I don't want to take a whole lot of time with the figures, unless the figure is the focal point and the whole reason for you painting the painting. And then obviously you could take some more time and make add more detail and make them seem more believable. But most of the time, what how I'm painting figures is to just give my scene a little bit of life. Put some people walking on the street or on the path in your painting, what, whatever the case may be. And legs, I kind of, I tend to use um, more paint, less water, and kind of dry brush the legs in to give the figure a sense of movement. Top of the head, maybe put some hair. You can go back in and add a little skin tone if that gets lost. So that's kind of someone standing still. Um, another thing that's important is uh, grouping, grouping your figures together. So if you want more than one figure, maybe there's someone um, behind this person walking. So we can add in another head there. Let's connect this figure right into this one. If the ground is flat, you can put all of their heads at the same level, but you're just changing how far down their legs come in the painting. So let me give you an example of that. Say you have a person off in the distance. If you put their head the same level here, but their body needs to be smaller, that's the best way to do it. Keep their heads at the same level and you're just adjusting where their legs come down. So automatically this gives you a sense of distance. If you figure in the background, the heads are about the same height and the legs just come down uh, to a different spot. Something that you'll also find when you're painting figures is that if you have a couple figures that are more believable or more detailed, maybe near the front. Maybe that person behind them, give them him or her some hair. And then you can add like maybe a purse, some detail. So once you have some figures in place, the ones in the background don't need to have as much detail as the ones in the front do. I mean, you can, they can almost be little dry brush marks and you'll understand what you're looking at. All right, let's do another figure 
maybe a profile, someone walking off to the side. You don't need all of your figures to be going the same direction or wearing the same clothes. You can mix things up. Maybe an arm sticking out there. This is really fun to play with. And you might see figures as kind of a burden, but once you get into practicing them, it can really be kind of relaxing. Give your figures a, a cast shadow if, if your setting, if your painting allows for it. The shadows can help ground them and make, make it seem uh, more believable. And also, shadows are good at connecting figures to other figures as well. So let's talk about what we need to remember again. Remember your proportions, seven and a half, or approximately seven and a half heads tall. Try to group your figures, give them a cast shadow, that can help group them as well, and give them life and give them some motion. And like I mentioned earlier, this is a great thing to practice. Find a picture of people walking, a large group of people, and just pick out individual figures and practice painting them. And so if you put some time into this, you know, you'll get better over time. So here's an example. If you do a few figures that make them, make them a little more believable, other figures can kind of just be marks. And those marks you start to see as a crowd of people. If you're giving the viewer the key, which is the figure, the other marks around them can also look like figures. Another thing that's important to do that we didn't really cover in our example is try to blend your figures into the background. So if you're, if you're doing different washes, your lightest wash, go ahead and you can mix in some skin tones into that wash or whatever the light color of the fabric of their clothing. You can incorporate them into your painting. And so you're not just adding a figure over the top. You know how, what you want your figure to be from the start of your painting process. Here's just a little bit more practice. The more that you do this, the more believable that your figures are going to look. Well, I hope that you found this information helpful and you can begin to see how figures should not be an intimidating thing to paint and how they can add some life and a sense of scale to your paintings. And I wanted to mention, if you haven't seen my free video lesson, Eight Tips to Avoid Overworking Your Painting, take a look at it. You can follow the link below or you can get to it in my bio on Instagram. I've gotten some great feedback from this video lesson and it's been very helpful to solve a big problem that I have had to deal with and that is overworking your painting. So check out that free video lesson and I'll see you next time.